In this video, I'm going to be creating two Eman Gatsi style edits, but with a twist. For each edit, I'm going to give myself a completely different time limit. In previous videos, I've made edits in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, and one hour. In this one, it's just going to be the polar opposites of the two, 10 minutes and one hour. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to see the real difference between spending 10 minutes editing in an Eman Gatsi style and spending one hour editing in the same style. So there should be a huge difference between the two edits. And if not, then I guess I've wasted a lot of time. Also, if you are a beginner or intermediate video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out my video editing product skill cut through the top link in the description below. The first edit that I'm going to try to recreate is this one. And for this one, I'm going to give myself a total of 10 minutes to create it. And as you can see, there will be a timer in the top right hand corner. That isn't the timer for this video. That is the timer for how long it took me to edit it. So there will be multiple points where I will be stopping to like explain why I did something and the timer will stop as well. So the timer in the top right is how long it actually took me to create it when I was editing it. If you want to follow along with what I'm doing, you can also find the asset which I've used to create both of these in the description below. And because this one is only 10 minutes, I will have most of the video and I won't have many cuts throughout this thing. I won't have many cuts like with the one hour one, I will have multiple cuts or this video will be way too long. But for this one, because it's only 10 minutes, it's going to be rushed anyway but I won't have too many cuts and you guys can follow along with what I'm doing. But I am warning you, if you are following along, I did rush this very much because the aim for this was to finish it in 10 minutes, but I guess you can slow it down if you want to follow along. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composition. I'm going to name this 10 mins Eman Gatsi edit. Then I'm going to import the assets which I'm going to be using today. There's quite a few of them and you can find a link to them in the description below. Then I'm going to start off by trying to create the background. So I'm going to create a new solid and I'm going to add the gradient ramp effect onto this. I'm going to make the start color like on the left side of the screen and the um, end color on the right side of the screen. I'll make the start color like a bluish light blue kind of color and I'll make the end color like a, that same color but a darker version of that and I'm going to use the pen tool to select the color and then just make the color darker. I'm actually going to adjust the color and make it a bit more darker blue as well. I'm basically trying to recreate the background of what was in the original video and I'm also going to increase the ramp caster to 512 which is the max amount that you can do and this is just going to make the um, colors blend a bit nicer together. Then when I'm happy with that, I'm then going to import the this picture of the city. This is the exact one he used. You can find this on FreePick and I'll link this below. I'm then just going to scale it up and position it where I want it to be. And then I'm also going to import this um, like silhouette of Dubai, which is also the exact one he used. I managed to find both of these on FreePick. It took me ages to find these, but I found the exact ones he used. But yeah, again, I'm going to scale this up and position this in the middle and where I want it to be, just slightly in front of like the uh, city behind it. And then when I'm happy with this, I'm going to search up the effects and presets fill, and I'm going to add this onto the city in the background. And I'm going to make the, it, the, the color of this a darker version of the background. So essentially, I'm going to get the pen tool and select the color, and then I'm just going to make it a darker version of that so you can actually see it. I'm then going to make both of these layers, like the city layers, 3D. And then I'm also going to make the background 3D as well. I'm then going to create a new solid and I'm going to position this below the Dubai layer. I'm going to make this 3D as well. And then I'm going to press R and I'm going to change the X rotation to minus 85. And this is going to act as the floor. I'm then going to position this at the bottom like this. And then I'm going to also stretch this so and then it fits the, um, the rest of the composition like this. It's kind of messed up the layers. As you can see, you can't really see the top part, but I'll fix this in a sec. So to fix this, I'm actually just going to delete the background. And as you can see, now you can see it. And I'm just going to stretch it and position it where I want it to be. So then it's just in line with the bottom of the city behind. And yeah, I'm just going to make a new solid and I'll put this at the bottom for now. And I'll change that back to what it originally was with the gradient in a sec. I'm then going to import this grid overlay. And then I'm going to make this layer 3D and I'll press R and then I'll make it minus 85 like the floor. And then I'll position this down so then it's just over the floor. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets motion tile and I'll add this onto the grid. And then I'm going to increase the output width and height until it basically matches the floor. I'm then going to toggle switches and modes and I'm going to change the mode to overlay. And then I'm going to add the gradient ramp effect onto this floor. And I'm going to make sure the color at the end is black and then the color at the start is blue. And yeah, I'm just going to play around with the positioning a bit as well. And then when I'm happy with this, I'm just going to pick whip all of the rest of the layers apart from the actual like uh, bottom layer to the grid like this. 
So I'm going to pick whip the, um, the floor, then the Dubai picture, and then the city picture as well. And then I'm going to keyframe the position at the start. And then I'm just going to go forward until basically like until I think it should stop moving. So about three seconds in, I'll go back to the start and I'm just basically just going to move the third one. So and then everything's closer and everything's zoomed in more. Because if you go back to the original video, you'll see that it basically like moved back. I could have just scaled this in, but that's not as like what he did. What he did was it, he basically made it look like it's going along the floor and this will make it give that effect more than just scaling in. And to give off the look like it's actually um, going across the floor, I'm actually going to go to the end keyframe and I'll just move it down. And now it will really look like it's kind of like going back like it did in his video. And then now I'm happy with this, I'm just going to get the text tool at the top and I'm just going to type up Dubai. The font I'm using is Montserrat Semi Bold, by the way. I'm going to make the color white and I'm just going to scale it up a bit and position it in the middle. Then when I have felt it's the right size, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it 3D and I'm going to pick whip it to the grid as well. So now the text will move back as well like every with everything else. And I'm going to add a transition and I'm not going to add the exact one he used because he's, his one will take a bit too much time. And this one I think is going to look a bit better, but it's going to be very similar. And what I'm going to do to save time is I'm going to go to window, then I'm going to open up Animation Composer 3, which is a free extension by Mr. Horse. I'm not sponsored or affiliated with this company. It's just Animation Composer 3 is a really effective way of just applying pre-made transitions and effects onto your video without having to animate it yourself. So it does definitely save a lot of time in these kind of scenarios. You can download it for free. I'm not, it's not, I'm not gonna link it because I'm not like sponsored by this company. Just search up on Google, like Animation Composer 3, Mr. Horse download, and then you can just download it as well. I'm gonna open it up here and I'm gonna go to Starter Presets, Transitions, Text Layer, and I'm gonna find Scale Characters 2, and I'm just gonna add this onto the Dubai text. Then I'm gonna move the marker a bit closer, and as you can see, when I play this back, there's a transition, but it's behind the text. So what I'm going to do to fix this, I'm just going to move the position a bit and then it should go back in front of the actual city. Now I'm going to add a glow. So I'm just going to search up in the effects and presets glow and I'm going to add this onto the Dubai text and I'm going to try and do what was in the original video. So I'm going to change the glow based on to alpha channel and I'm going to make the color a just a um, blue color like this. And then I'm just going to increase the glow radius by a bit like this until the text is a bit like this. Actually, I'll make the color a lot brighter. And as you can see, it's quite similar to what it was in the original video. And now I'm gonna add that signature like Eman Gatsi uh, low frame rate look. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and I'm gonna search up in the effects and presets uh, posterize time. And I'm gonna add this onto the adjustment layer. I'll make the frame rate 14. And when I play this back, as you can see, it will now have that glitchy laggy effect, which was kind of in the original video. And now I'm actually going to add the gradient back onto the background because I forgot to do that. So I'm going to search up the effects and presets gradient ramp and I'll add that onto the bottom layer. And actually before I do that, I'm actually going to move the city a bit down because there's a bit of a gap between like the city in the background and the floor. So I'll move that down a bit. And when I've done that, I'm going to make the start color um, on the left and the end color on the right, like so. And I'm going to make the start color like the same as the city, but just a bit brighter. And then I'm going to make the end color like the same as the city, but I'm going to adjust it a bit as well. So and then you can see it. And yeah, I'm trying to I'm just trying to recreate what was in the original video. And I think I've done a pretty good job with that. That uh, looks quite similar. I'm also just going to change the position of the Dubai city. So and then it's just a bit closer to the screen because in the original video, it was like closer to the camera than it is in mine. And now the problem is, is now it's gone forward because it's gone closer to the camera. It's now gone in front of the Dubai text. So I'm just also going to move the Dubai text closer to the camera as well using the position. So as you can see, now it's in front. I'm also just going to scale down the Dubai text a bit and position it in the middle again because it was a bit smaller in his video than it is in mine. And actually, I'm just going to increase the intensity of the glow on the Dubai text because it's if you look at the original video, it was more intense. I shall change the glow intensity to 1.5. And now I've done that. This is the finished edit. I've noticed in the render, the actual um, Dubai cities come out in quite low quality and that makes it not look as good as the original video. But I don't have enough time to correct it and start over again. So I'd say um, for 10 minutes, this is a pretty decent recreation. Now I'm going to move on to the one hour edit, and this is what I'm going to be trying to recreate in this part.
So I'm going to start off by creating a new composition. I'm just going to name mine Eman Gatsi one hour edit. I'm then going to import the assets which I'm going to be using for this. Again, you can find the link to this in the description below. It's free, by the way. I'm not going to charge you for this. It's just a Google Drive. And I'm going to import the grid overlay that we used um, for the other one. I'm going to make it 3D and I'm just going to change the X rotation to like, I don't know. I'm basically just going to keep playing around with it until it looks right. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets motion tile and I'm going to add this onto the uh, grid. I'm going to increase the um, output width and output height until it's like a lot bigger. And actually it, it doesn't really look similar to the original video. So I'm just going to position it so and then it does look more similar to the original video. So I'll move it up and then I'll move it closer to the camera as well. So and then the grid starts very close to the camera. I'm then just going to play around with the um, X rotation a bit until it looks uh, more similar to it did in the original video. And just a reminder, I'm also going to be rushing through this part of the video quite a lot because I'm the whole thing took me an hour. So obviously I'm not going to put that into the video or this video will be like an hour and 10 minutes and that's too long. So this video, this part of the uh, clip will be rushed a bit. So when I'm happy with the position of the grid, I'm then going to search up in the effects and presets gradient ramp and I'm going to add this onto the grid. I will make the start color like this dark red color and I'm just going to keep the um, end color at white. I'm going to create a new solid. And this is going to act as like the red part of it, which is almost gives that red overlay over the video. And I'm going to add the gradient ramp effect onto this as well. I'm going to make the start color on the left and the end color on the right. I'm then going to play around with the position. So and then the start color is a bit to the left. And I'm going to make the end color this like rose kind of red color. And I'm just going to play around the position of the gradient a bit as well. I'll make the mode screen. And actually, I'm going to make the opacity of this grid uh, 6%. And as you can see, this looks a lot more similar. And actually, I'll change the mode to, instead of screen. I'll just change it to soft light. And this is actually looking very similar to it did in the original video. And then I'm going to import the um, this like confetti overlay, which I found on YouTube. I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to change the mode to screen. So it's now an overlay. And if I play this back, as you can see, there is now like confetti falling on the screen. But I'm just going to adjust the start so then like it starts when the confetti falls because there's a pause where there's nothing falling. But I'm actually just going to scale it up because most of the confetti is falling in the middle part. And then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets fast box blur and I'm going to add this onto the um, confetti overlay. I'll make the blur radius too and I'm going to search up as well glow and I'll add this onto the confetti as well. And then I'm just going to increase the glow radius a bit as well to like 26 or something. And as you can see, this looks actually quite similar to the original video. It's never going to look the exact same, but it does look pretty similar. And I'm actually going to duplicate this and I'm just going to position it. So and then when the confetti like runs out on the first video, it's now going to then come into the second video. So and then the confetti goes on for twice as much time. And actually, I'm just going to make it so and then the first video starts a bit later. So there is a pause without confetti. And also in the original video, you'll if, if you watch it back, you'll see that the whole thing is like slowly scaling out. So what I'm going to do for this, if I just try and scale it out now, it will have um, the grid will like run out. So what I want to do is I'm just going to scale out the grid now at the start and then I'm going to make the grid like longer. And then that means when I scale back into the like I scale in and then zoom out, the grid will carry on for longer. And this means I can then create a new adjustment layer. I can search on the effects and presets transform. And I can add the transform effect onto this adjustment layer. I can keyframe the scale at the start and then I can go forward until I want it to like stop zooming in, which is around seven seconds in. I can keyframe the scale again and then I can go back to the original scale keyframe and I'm just going to scale it in. So and then it's like zoomed in again like it was before. And then I'm going to highlight these keyframes and I'm going to press F9 and I'm going to go into the graph editor and I'll create this with the graph, just a steep peak in the middle. Because if you go back to the original video, it started off like the zoom out started off slow. Then in the middle, it like went, went quite fast and then it slowed down again. I'm then again going to add the signature low frame rate glitchy Eman Gatsy look. So I'm going to add the posterize time effects onto this um, adjustment layer. I'll make the frame rate 12, but I'm also going to take this one step further. And I'm also going to add that kind of like slightly moving texture effect that he makes that he has in a lot of his videos as well. So to do this, I'm going to search up in the effects and presets turbulent displace and I'll add this onto the adjustment layer as well. I'll make the amount 30 and the size three. Then I'm going to open up the evolution options. And I'm going to alt click on the uh, random seed stopwatch. And then I'm going to type up in this like code box, random bracket four, and then closing bracket. And then I'm going to go back to the start of the um, bit. I'm going to press enter. And in the top part, I'm going to like type up posterize time. And then in the brackets, I'll put six. And then I'm going to duplicate this turbulent displace effect. 
and I'll make the amount and size of this new duplicated one eight. And now there will be the Emangatsi like kind of glitchy effect and the Emangatsi uh, low frame rate look. And this is the actual like background done. So now I'm actually going to start on the actual stuff like on the background, if you know what I mean, like the circle and then basically just everything else. So I'm going to start off with the like 99% uh, circle. So I'm going to go up to the shape tool and I'm going to keep keep pressing Q until I get the ellipsis tool. Then I'm going to hold shift and I'll create a big circle and then I'll align this circle as well. I'll turn off the fill color and I'm going to go to this add bit and I'm going to add a stroke here. And then I'm going to open up the stroke and I'm going to keyframe the stroke width at the start. And I'm just going to adjust it until it's around the size of how it was at the start of the video. Then I'm going to go forward by around a second and I'll just increase the stroke. So because if you go back to the original video, you can see that this like the circle got thicker at the start of the video. So now the circle gets slowly uh, thicker and thicker. I'll highlight these keyframes and I'll just create it the same steep peak in the middle like I did earlier. Then I'm going to search up in the effects and presets glow and I'm going to add this onto the circle as well. I'm then going to move this circle below the adjustment layer, but it's made it zoom in now. So I'm just going to decrease the scale of it and then center it again. And then when I'm happy with the circle here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the actual like see-through circle that goes like overlaps over the um, the original like glowing circle. So I'm just going to make another perfect circle by holding shift. And then I'm just going to align it in the middle like this. And then I'm just going to increase the stroke of it a bit as well. And it's way too big. So I'm just going to um, make it smaller again. And I'm going to make it like roughly the same size as the circle underneath it. But then I'm going to make the opacity of this 50%. And then I'll increase the stroke. So and then now it's like larger than the original circle. And as you can see, this is a very bad version of what was in the original video. I tried to figure out how he did it. I couldn't really figure out how he made it blurry. I guess he could have maybe like masked an overlay, over masked an adjustment layer and added a glow adjustment layer. But I can't really figure out how he did it. This is the only part of the video which I can't really figure out how he did it. So, but I've basically created my own version of this, which is nowhere near as good as his, but it still kind of works. And yeah, I'm also just going to add a glow onto this like bigger circle. I'll increase, increase the radius a bit. And as you can see, this is a like worse version of what was in the original video, I guess. I'm then just going to open up and add the um, trim paths effects. I'll open up trim paths. I'll keyframe the end at 0% of the start. Then I'll go forward by a couple seconds, maybe three seconds. And then I'm just going to increase the end. So then it's like a, fills out to about here or around 90%. Then I'm going to highlight these keyframes and I'll create a steep peak at the start like this with the graph. And as you can see now it starts off fast and then it slows down as time goes on. Then I'm going to add the 99% like um, text. So I'm just going to get the text and type up 99%. I'm going to put it below the adjustment layer and I'm just going to scale it up. Then I'm just going to make it a bit thinner and a bit higher. And then I'm going to change the color to white. Then I'm going to add the glow effect onto this text and I'm just going to increase the glow radius and decrease the glow intensity a bit. And then I'm going to create the box underneath the 99%. So I'm just going to keep pressing Q on the uh, shape tool until I get rectangle tool. Then I'm going to create a rectangle like this. I'll turn off the fill and stroke for now. And then I'm just going to align it in the middle. I'm then just going to position it below the adjustment layer. And I'm going to make the fill color white. But it's messed up the positioning, so I'm just going to scale it down a lot. And I'm just going to also like go into content, rectangle one, uh, rectangle path one, and I'll just increase the roundness to the max until it's a bar like this. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm also just going to type up happiness and I'm just going to position this happiness text below the adjustment layer. Pretty much everything just needs to be below the adjustment layer. And then obviously it's messed it up again. So I'm just going to make it centered. I'm going to uh, decrease the scale and I'm just going to position it in the middle of the actual um, thing. You can't see it because it's white as well. So I'm just going to change the color. So, and then it's what it was in the original video, which is this I guess like red color. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it like make the letters more bunched up by just moving this. And then I'm going to make it aligned in the middle again. And I'm just going to position it. So and then it's in the middle of the bar. I'm then going to search up glow and I'm going to add this onto the like bar. I'm going to increase the radius by a bit and I'll decrease the intensity. And then I'll search up drop shadow and I'll add this onto the actual happiness text. I'll increase the um, the distance and the um, the softness as well to like 20. And as you can see, this looks quite similar to what it did in the original video. Now I'm actually going to try and add a glitch onto this 99% text because that was what was in the original video. They may have even used a preset, so I can't really recreate the exact glitch because it would just take too long and I will not have enough time to perfect everything. So I'm going to do the second best thing, which also takes a lot less time. So I'm just going to use Animation Composer 3 again. So I'll open that up like I did earlier. 
and I'll go to starter presets, transitions, text layer, and I'm going to add flickering decode and scale words from start to, and this will add a glitch effect like so. It's not as good as the one he used, but it's pretty good considering the fact that it took me only a few seconds. I'm then also now going to animate the actual happiness box. So I'm going to pick whip the happiness text layer to the box underneath it or the bar. Then I'm going to keyframe the position. Then I'm going to go forward by like 10 frames or so, maybe 15. Then I'll just add another position keyframe and I'll go back to the original one and I'm just going to move the whole thing down. And because it's pick whipped, it will track onto it. The happiness text will track onto the bar. Then I'm going to keyframe the opacity at 0% at the start. Then I'm just going to go forward by like 10 frames and I'll make the opacity 100%. And I'll do the same thing with the uh, happiness. So I'll keyframe the opacity at the start at 0%. Then I'll make it 100% like so. And I'm also going to search up Fastbox Blur and I'll add this onto both of these as well. But I'm just going to add it onto the first one. I'm going to keyframe the blur radius at 5 at the start. And as you can see now it's blurry. And I'm going to go like a bit forward and I'll make it 0 and then I'm going to copy this and I'll paste this also onto the happiness text as well. So now it will be blurry and it will pop up like so. But I'm going to move the position keyframes a bit more forward in time. I'm not going to move anything else but just the position keyframes because in the original video like the position came up just a bit faster. Like it basically like it was blurry and it like um, the it faded in slowly and then it popped up after. But I'm just going to edit the um, actual like graph so and then the steep peak is now in the middle. As you can see now it pops up like so and this is actually pretty similar to the original one i'm then going to highlight all of the layers associated with the circle so basically everything apart from the background and the adjustment layer and i'm going to right click and press pre-compose i'm going to name it circle and this will group everything together so now when i move one thing with the circle it'll move everything and then i'm going to go into the circle layer and i'm also just going to move the actual like everything to do with the happiness uh, bar so the bar and the text like about a second forward in time so now it does this and then the bar pops up and now i'm also just going to add a like wiggle effect on the actual like zoom out because when it zooms out it's not it doesn't just zoom out um like smoothly if you look at the original video it kind of has this like slight wiggle effect which is nice and to create that i'm just going to keyframe the scale at the end at 102 because this means when it wiggles it doesn't like show the outsides of the screen because it's zoomed in a bit so then I'm going to alt click on the position keyframe for the transform and I'm going to type up in the code box uh, wiggle and then in between in the brackets I'm going to add 1.5 comma 7 and this means now there will be a slight wiggle effect as well as the scale out which is as similar to the original video as it can get. And as you can see what we've actually created so far is actually very similar to uh, the original video but now I'm actually going to move on to creating the bit with the actual hand and the bit with the chocolate and also it's never going to look the same as his because i'm not using the same assets he used i could find the assets for the cities but i can't find the assets for the hand so i'm basically it's not going to look as good as his in terms of the assets but i'm going to try and do the actual same movements and everything he did so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go around four seconds in and i'm going to import the picture of the hand i'm going to add that below the adjustment layer i'm going to rotate it so and then it's pointing this way and I'm just going to also position it so and then it's on the left side of the screen and I'm also just going to scale it up like so. I'm then just going to move the actual composition so and then it starts when I want it to start and I'm going to keyframe the position then. Then I'm just going to scale up the hand and I'm going to position it where I want it to be and I'm just going to create a position keyframe at the start and then about two seconds after and at the original at the first position keyframe i'm just going to move it down so and then it starts off screen and then so and then it pops back up onto screen and then i'm going to highlight these keyframes press f9 i'll go into the graph editor and i'll just create a steep peak at the start like so and as you can see now it pops up like this but the problem is when it keeps scaling out that you can actually see the edge of the hand and obviously you don't want this this looks horrendous so i'm just going to scale up the whole hand so then you can't see the edge of it at any point in the video i'm also just going to move it to, like a bit to the left Now I'm actually going to start creating the tissue that the hand is holding. So I'm going to get the pen tool and I'm just going to try and draw out the actual tissue. So it doesn't need to be exactly the same, but yeah, pretty much this is what I'm going to make. So it's basically just going to be a like really wiggly box, but yeah, it's going to try and like create that kind of like tissue effect, I guess. And when I'm happy with it, I'm also just going to move it below the hand. So, and then it looks like the hand's actually holding it and I'm going to move it actually like below the hand physically as well. And then I'm also just going to rotate it so and then it's like completely straight and then I'll position it back to where it was before. And then I need to actually track the tissue onto the hand so I'm just going to pick whip the uh, tissue to the hand. And now when the hand moves so will the tissue. 
So as you can see now when the hand pops up, so does the tissue. I'm then actually going to create like the box for the tissues as well. So I'm going to create a new composition. I'm also going to get the pen tool and actually I'm just going to import this like grid. This is not like going to be in the video, but this is just to help me make sure the lines actually like are straight. So I'm going to start off with like the back part, I guess, and I'm just going to create a trapezium a bit like this. It's going to be a thin trapezium and this is going to try and make the box look 3D. I'm going to make sure it's centered. And then when I'm happy with that, I'm also going to get the um, the shape, like the rectangle tool, and I'm actually going to create the front bit of the box. So I'm going to change the opacity of shape layer 2 to 20%, and I'll make the shape layer 1 30%. I just want them to be slightly different, just so and then you can see like the actual, the fact it's 3D. And I'm also just going to create an outline over the front part of the box. So I'm just going to duplicate that, and I'll turn off the um, fill color and I'll increase the stroke ever so slightly to like five. I'm then gonna increase the opacity to like 50% and I'll add a glow onto this as well. And I'll increase the radius a bit. And as you can see now, there is a slight like line around the tissue box because that's what was in the original video. Now I'm actually gonna create a straight line like this with the pen icon. And this is gonna be like the actual like, I guess, whole of the tissue box, I guess. I'll make sure to center it as well and I'll just increase the stroke like so. So this is pretty similar to what it was in the original video. I'm then just gonna import this tissue box and I forgot to delete the actual grid. So I'm gonna go back into the box one and I'm just gonna delete the grid. And now, as you can see, we have a tissue box, but I'm just gonna scale it down and I'll position it where it should be. So then it looks like the tissue is being pulled out of the tissue box. And when I've positioned it right, I'm also going to pick whip the box to the hand as well. So the um, box actually moves up with the hand and tissue as well. Now I'm actually going to make the actual hand like pull the tissue out of the box. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to cut the tissue and hand layer with uh, command shift D. Don't do this with the actual box, just do it with the hand and the tissue and just pick whip the uh, second tissue layer to the second hand layer. So now I can keyframe the rotation when I want the hand to pull the tissue out of the tissue box. Then I'll go forward by like a second or so and I'll just rotate it so and then it's like this. Then I'm also going to keyframe the position at this same point and I shall delete the um, other position keyframes that were there when I duplicated it. And then I'll go to the um, second rotation keyframe and I'll also just then move the hand so and then it's like up here. So now it will look like the uh, hand is pu like pulling a tissue out of the box. So now with the four keyframes we have, I'm also going to highlight them, press F9 and I'll go into the graph editor and I'm just going to create a steep peak in the middle like so. But I'm just going to move it so and then the hand moves a bit to the left as well. So next I'm actually going to do the chocolate bar bit. So I'm going to create a new composition and I'll just name it chocolate. Then I'm going to import this chocolate bar, which I also found on FreePick. I'm just going to scale it up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually separate like one of the squares from the bar. So to do this, I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to make sure that the actual like layer is selected. And I'm going to go to this um, like this rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a square like this for just one of the squares. And as you can see now, it's separated it. So now we've just got the square on its own. Then I'm going to import the chocolate bar again. And this time I'm going to now separate the like one of the squares again. So now we have a square on its own and then the bar like without the square. So to do this, I'm just going to get the same thing. I'll make sure it's selected. But this time I'll just do this and I'll do the exact same thing I just did. But and then on this mask bit, I'll, I'll click inverted. So now we'll have exactly what I want. And I'm also just going to scale it up. So and then it's basically the same size as the square. So and then it looks like the square is basically the same size as the actual bar. And I'm just going to position it so and then it's roughly here. And then I'm going to go back into the actual original um, composition and I'm going to import this chocolate bar, like this chocolate like composition into the actual thing when I want it to start, which is eight seconds in. I'm then going to rotate it like so and I'm going to make it so and then it starts off screen like in the bottom right hand corner. And then at the start, I'm going to um, keyframe the position and then I'm going to go forward to until I want it to be fully on screen and I'm just going to move it so and now it's like here, positioned about here, which is what it was in the original video. And then I'm going to highlight these keyframes. I'll press F9 and I'll just create a steep peak at the start like so. So then it will pop up onto the screen in quite a smooth way. Now I'm going to actually animate the actual square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward by around like half a second and I'm going to keyframe the, um, the position like here. And then I'm going to go forward by around two seconds or maybe three seconds and I'll just move it so and then it's up here. I'm also going to keyframe the rotation there and then I'll go to the second position keyframe and I'll just rotate the actual square as well and then I'll move it back to where it was. So now we'll actually like rotate like so. 
then I'll highlight these four keyframes. I'll go into the graph editor and I'll create a steep peak roughly near the middle like so. So it's like, it's not rough. It's not exactly in the middle, but it's slightly to the left of the middle. So now the square is actually going to like rotate in and like be detached from the bar, but I'll make it rotate a bit more and I'll make it almost do like almost a 360. So I'm just going to basically make the rotation a bit more. it does move like quite fast. So I'm just going to space out these keyframes a bit and I'll also just move them a bit closer to the start. Then I'm going to add a glow onto this chocolate bar and I'll um, decrease the threshold and increase the um, radius a bit. And I'll also decrease the intensity as well. So now there's this subtle glow. But I've just realized that the bottom of the box is now visible now we've zoomed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the box one and I'm just going to extend it. So and then it's now like it's longer. And I'll make sure the outline of the glow is aligned with this as well. So now the bottom of the box isn't visible. But now I'm going to add a glow onto the tissue and the hand because I forgot to do that earlier. So I'm going to add the glow effect onto the tissue. I'm going to increase the radius a bit. And when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to make sure that's applied onto the original tissue layer as well. And I'm going to add a glow onto the hand as well. And I'm just going to play around with the glow as well. I'll increase the radius and decrease the intensity. And when I'm happy with that, I'm also going to copy that glow. And I'll apply that onto the second hand layer as well. So now there should be a glow on the hand and on the tissue. And if you go back to the original video, you can also see there is a blur on the actual chocolate bar, not on the square that like like rotates in, but on the actual original chocolate bar. So to do this, I'm just going to add a fast box blur onto the chocolate bar. I'll make the blur radius like 0.7 and we'll see how that looks. That's nowhere near enough. So I'm just going to change the blur radius to three. We've pretty much almost finished everything, but now I just need to actually create the um, the two little like bars. So I'm going to create a new composition and I'm just going to name it like the word I will not say. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle like so. And I'm just going to make the fill color white. And then I'll go to rectangle, rectangle path one. And I'm just going to increase the roundness to the max. So it's now a bar. And then I'm going to type up inside the bar the word I will not say again. I'm then just going to scale it up and position it so and then it's actually in the middle of the bar. And then I'm going to go back to the original uh, composition. I'm just going to copy the settings. I shall go into the circle one and I'll copy the settings from the um, happiness one, the drop shadow from that, and the glow from the bar from that as well. So now we have a glow and a drop shadow onto the actual um, new one. And when I'm happy with that, I'm also just going to import that back into the original composition. I'll actually add it below the tissue. And this means it's below everything apart from the circle. And then I'm just going to position it so when it starts when I want it to start, which is around seven seconds in. Then I'll just decrease the scale of it and I'll position it where I want it to start. And then now actually I'll make it actually like transition in. So I'll keyframe the, the position at the start. Then I'll go forward by like 15 frames or 10 frames. And I'll add a keyframe. Then I'll go back to the original one and I'll just move it down a bit. Then I'll highlight the keyframes. I'll press F9 and then I'll change the graph. So and then there is a steep peak at the start. I really don't have that much time left, so I'm basically rushing this a lot. I'm also going to search up Fastbox Blur, and I'll make it start off with a blur like I did for the other one. So I'll keyframe the blur radius at the start at like 5, then I'll go forward by around like a second or two, and I'll make it 0. But it's nowhere near blurry enough, so I'll make the first blur one, I'll just increase that by quite a lot. I've created two, so I'll delete the first one actually, and I'll just make it about 40. Then I'm going to make it fade in, so I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% at the start. Then I'll go forward to the second position keyframe and I'll make the opacity 100%. And as you can see, now it transitions in like it did in the original video. Now I'm going to create the second bar, which is the one where it says chocolate in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these two um, layers from the other one and I'm just going to copy them. Then I'll create a new uh, composition. I'll name it chocolate box. I'll then paste these layers in like so, but and then I'll change the text. So and then it now says chocolate. I'll make sure that it's cop um, capital letters as well. I'm then going to import this back into the original composition. I'll scale it down and I'll position it where I want it to be. And with this one, instead of it going from uh, below to above, instead of it like popping up, it actually goes down. So what I'll do is I'll keyframe the uh, position at the start. Then I'll go forward by like 10 frames or 15 and I'll actually move the position down a bit. Then I'll highlight these keyframes, press F9 and I'll make a um, steep peak at the start. Then I'll keyframe the opacity at 0% at the start. Then I'll go forward by like 10 frames and I'll make it 100. Then I'm going to add the fast box blur effect onto this as well. And I'm going to keyframe the start at like five. Then I'm going to go forward by like, um, like five, 10 frames and I'll make it uh, zero. And actually I'll make the first one and I'll change it to uh, 40 like it was for the other um, bar. So as you can see now it'll drop down. 
actually I'm going to space out these position keyframes a bit and I'm actually going to move them a bit forward in time because if you go back to the original video, you'll see that it actually drops down a bit more forward in time. It doesn't just drop down straight away. But I'm also just going to change the um, graphs and then the steep peak is in the middle instead of the start. But I'll space out the blur radius keyframes a bit as well. And as you can see now it drops down and this is very similar to the original video. And I'm just going to play around with the overall keyframes a bit as well. And actually in the original video, it starts off by going up, then it drops down again. So what I'm going to do is I'm, at the start, I'm going to just make the position keyframe. So, and then it starts off a bit lower. So now it goes up, then down. It comes up really weirdly. So I'm going to highlight these first two keyframes for the position. And I'm just going to make it so that, as you can see, the graph's really off. So I'm going to make the uh, steep peak at the start like so. And now I've done that. This is the one hour edit finished in 56 minutes and 14 seconds. Just a quick reminder about Skillcut, if you're a beginner or intermediate video editor looking to level up and edit like a professional as soon as possible, then I would highly recommend that you check out Skillcut through the top link in the description below.